Now you got something for you back there. Gonna be good. Gonna be good, little kids. That's all right. I ain't gonna hurt you. I don't see no ladybugs. I drunk one of the ladybugs at home. I got in the middle of the night, and you know, you got ladybugs when it gets warm. And I got in the bathroom, got me a drink of water, and I felt something in it. I was like, pow, I got. Man, make my tongue stink, buddy. Them things, you can just touch them. That, just that much. And it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Take your Bible now. We're going to get right back in the Word of God. We finished up with Philippians. I thought it would be good to just go ahead and get Colossians. We have studied parts of Colossians before, but I want to do that uh, tonight. And let's all get our Bible. Colossians, chapter number one. That's C-O-L-O-S-S-I-A-N-S. -S -S. Colossians. That means it is a church at Colossae, which was a city in uh, Western Asia Minor. Uh, if I, from the account I read... It was a big, thriving metropolis city for back in those days. And it sort of got shrunk and had some battles and stuff, got little, littler and got eclipsed like Hickory and Morgan. Uh, it was good. And then maybe Hickory just maybe swallowed up Morgan like that by Laodicea. And uh, so tonight we're looking at Colossians chapter number one. I think that it seems to be, seems to be, Major, uh, majorly to our age. Now you got to remember when them guys wrote the Bible, they were writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. So it wasn't just the people right then; it also carried over into people in the future events and now, even now. So people make a big mistake when they say, "Well, Paul wrote to these people, and they had this problem, that problem." That is true. But all this stuff relates to us now, and especially this book right here. This is one of the most relevant, you want, to, you want me to sound up to date, relevant books to a Christian in our generation that there is. As a matter of fact, the word Laodicea or Laodicean is mentioned five times in this little book. That'll tell you something. Well, that's not an accident. Laodicea is the last church age, the seventh church age in Revelation chapter 3, where the church is rich and increased with goods and has need of nothing, but don't realize it's wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked, just a mess. And so um, it's it's not an accident that the word Laodicea or Decean is mentioned five times here. So um, we're not going to get into a lot of heavy doctrine tonight, maybe just a little bit, uh, but some, one or two very important verses that I'm going to look at. And before we get through this, we're going to, you remember back when we got into Philippians, and Ephesians, Philippians, we got into uh, predestination. We've done some studies in here on Calvinism. You should know a little bit more about that now. We also talked about um, water baptism and how to look at different, certain, certain kinds of scripture, certain scripture verses, and some controversial stuff. And uh, we'll, we'll do that here in this book also. So, uh, the writer, of course, uh, here the Apostle Paul uh, himself, and uh, he did not found, he wasn't the founder of this church, or it don't say he was, and it looks like this guy named Epaphras was in verse 7. See in verse 7, else y'all learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. You learned all this stuff from him. Paul might have been referencing this man as the actual founder of this church. I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows. So there's some stuff in here we're going to hit. And one of them is the rudiments of the world. Rudiments. That's a word that took out all the new modern versions of the Bible. Elements, the rudiments of the world. And then we're going to hit a major verse on philosophy in chapter 2. That's another thing that makes me think this book is for our generation. The strong reference to philosophy in chapter 2. Let no man spoil you through philosophy. 
That's not an accident that's in the Bible, people. Because we are living in a generation that's absolutely spoiled by, by philosophy. And this teaching and that teaching. And they're, and they're saying, um, they're trying to say stuff like the guys in the Bible got their beliefs and teaching from earlier uh, poets and earlier uh, seers. And junk, anything, anything they can do uh, to make the Bible not be real and relevant, they're doing it. There, there's people making, you, uh, especially a lot of girls, people, female center and stuff. And I don't know what it is. There's, I've seen a couple of, of guys. But several girls, I think they're about in their early 30s. And uh, they're just coming out making videos saying, I'm an ex-Christian and I'll just tell you why it's silly to believe God made the whole world and let all this sin. If he's such a good God, why did he let... Y'all seen that stuff they're doing? And, and I'm sitting there thinking, I know what's wrong with you. You got raised in church and taught right, but never did really get a hold of the real thing. And then you, you got married and your husband went off and left you. And you're divorced and mad at God and want to shack up. That's what's wrong with you, girl. And uh, just about every one of them have that same story. Have that same story. They got mad. Why would you go on? Why would you go on TikTok and spend your time making videos of something you didn't even believe was real? Yeah. If you're so great and smart and beautiful, uh, you're uh, you know, you're crazy. It's what you are. And they they go out of their way, just deconstructing. They're saying I'm decon I'm a deconstructing out of Christianity. That means I was taught and took to church all my life, but now I realize that's mental abuse. And now I do whatever I want to. I feel no kind of guilt. I feel no kind of... I'm woke. And I think woke means born again of the devil. That's what I think it is. I think the devil does something in a person's mind, something snaps, and they become reprobate where they can't even reason right and wrong no more. And if you, you can get like that, a person can get like that if they ain't careful. So, uh, the Bible talks a lot about stuff like that. So, the, this little book, little book here is written between 62 and 64 A.D. That means 30 years after Jesus went back to heaven. 30 years after Jesus. That'd be like from uh, 20. It'd be like from uh, 2000 uh, or 1990, 94 or somewhere along there. It'd be like 94 to now after Jesus went back to heaven. Um, it has four chapters. 95 verses, 1,979 words. The word Colossian means punishment of all things. And as I said, it was a little city there. And we'll look at it. Most of these first few verses are very, very simple and right to the point. So we'll just go on these pretty fast. Ready? Number one, Paul, an apostle. You Remember we studied out what an apostle is. You need to know what an apostle is. You say, Why? Because there's people running all over the country claiming they're apostles. Men and women claiming they are apostles. There are no women apostles in the Bible. There are no uh, women pastors or deacons in the Bible. There's old Phoebe, but she isn't a deacon. She is just a helper of the church, a servant of the church. And you need to know what an apostle is. An apostle was somebody who saw Jesus Christ he said, what about Paul? He saw him on the road to Mass. He saw a light and knocked him off his horse, brother. Uh, he he uh, saw Jesus and had was given special powers to work miracles as the gospel was going to the Jews. That's what an apostle was. There are no apostles right now as far as that. They, they claim they are, but if they are, show me. Show me. Raise some dead people. Uh, I believe you then. I, I come up here and apologize. You can show me you can raise a dead person. But they ain't going to do that. They just heal stuff that you can't see. Um, but anyway, uh, God can heal. God can do anything he ever could. God can make me speak Chinese right now if he wanted to. God could raise a dead person right now if he wanted to. But I am not one of those 12 apostles and those that have the apostolic power. I'm not. You're not either. So he said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And uh, that's, that's why he said, you don't choose the ministry, you are chosen for the ministry. And Timotheus, that's the same Timothy, that's young Timothy, the young preacher that the two books were written to, our brother. Now who's it to? Verse 2. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. People who are in Christ. This book's not to lost people. This book is not to the heathen. 
This book was not to the Jews. It was for saved people, Jew and Gentile, in Christ, in Jesus Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for that verse. I, I need that. I need grace and I need peace. Amen. If God's blessed you with grace and peace in your life, shout about it, man. Shout about it. Glory to God. You got, you got it made. We give thanks, verse 3, to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Now there again, you got to learn how to read the Bible. Look at that. We give thanks to God and the Father. Is that two different people? We give thanks to God and the Father. No. There's only one God. There's only one Father. You learn how to read the Bible. See, that's what throws people. They read that and say, well, see, it says God and the Father. So God must not be the Father and Father. No. It'd be like, um, it'd be like you coming in here saying, I'm going to be praying for Brother Danny and the pastor of this church like that. Uh, I'm Brother Danny. I'm the pastor. I'm I'm a daddy, I'm a husband, I'm a neighbor, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm all them things. Uh, I claim to be. I try, uh, but uh, I don't always do good at it, but I try. And you know what? You, you got to learn. Like I told you on Sunday night, you got to learn how to read that book. You'll hurt yourself with it. People don't learn how to read the Bible, cut yourself with it. That's how communism got started. Uh, because they thought uh, uh, giving to every man everything is equal. Uh, uh, Y'all too hot? Too hot in here. It's either too hot or too cold. It ain't making it don't matter what we do. It ain't good enough for you. I'm just kidding. But uh, you got to remember that now. You got to remember that uh, when he says, giving thanks to God and the Father, that's not two different, different people. God and the Father. He's God and He's the Father. Both. He's God and He's the Father. God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You gotta, that's why I encourage you to read the Bible a lot because stuff like that starts clicking. You read over here, and then it makes sense over here. Quickly, um, we give thanks to God and the Father, praying always for you. So a good, a good preacher, a good man of God prays for his people, and uh, that's my job to pray for you. It's our job to pray for each other. It's a sin not to pray for each other. When you pray, sometimes do what I do. I know it's easier for me because I got this place memorized. I ain't kidding you. I got this place memorized. I can tell you if I have a regular crowd, who wasn't here Sunday night? I can. I can it just sticks in my head. And uh, I know where everybody sits. I know when the kids are here. There's some of you I watch for you until you walk in that door. You think I ain't, you think I ain't observant, but I'm, I am very observant. And ain't much get by me. Uh, and uh, my daughter Chris is worse than I am. Ain't nothing gets by her. Uh, but, uh, or that neither, but Chris is really, really sharp on stuff like that. But uh, a, a pastor should do that. So sometimes when I'm down praying in my closet, I start right here. And I pray for Miss Desi. And I pray for her daughter, Kristen. And that little guy <laughs> that stands with them. And then... Uh, and then I saw her. I, I, I thought of her. At least you know he's alive. That's, that's better than some of y'all doing. But uh, anyway, and then I thought of her squish she is right over there. And I and I, so I don't remember everybody, but I go down through there, and then I go down through here, then I go down through here, and I go and I, and I, as the Lord puts you on my heart, I be, I begin to pray, and I try to do that. I try to do that. He said, "I pray always for you." Look, the Lord wouldn't have put that much emphasis on praying. If it, didn't, if it didn't work or do something. We are supposed to pray for each other. Uh, you ever heard anybody say, if you want to talk about me, do it down on your knees, talk to the Lord. Boy, we could stand a lot more of that, couldn't we? We could stand a lot more of talking to the Lord instead of uh, to other people about each other. And uh, so let's all, let's all take a lesson from that. Verse, verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints. Now, that's a great verse. That's a, that's a good verse. What he's saying is, word got out. Word got out about you people. We've heard about your faith. We've heard about your love to all the saints. We don't even go to that church. There ain't no internet. There ain't no telephones. There ain't no TV. And way over here, we've heard 
how much y'all love each other, how much you care about each other. Listen, that's a tremendous testimony. I've heard people say that about church. They go there and they say, well, them people really seem to love each other. That's a good testimony. That's a good testimony. And look, people, we, we don't all agree on everything. Of course we don't. We, we should. We should. That's what cults are. People are not allowed to disagree. That, that, that ain't right. We agree on the main things, and we agree on 95% of the things. But we, we should love one another. We should love one another. Give each other a break, you know. Uh, give each other a break. Like, like Brother Ronnie uh, Chavis, when he's preaching at winter camp, and he's, he's talking about, he said, uh, we can know some old guy goes down to the bar and gets drunk every Saturday night and, and cusses, runs around on his wife and won't pay his bills, and we'll, and, and we'll just love him and say, man, I'm praying for you. I'm praying, Lord, really do something for you. And one of our Christian brothers does one little thing we disagree with, and we won't even have nothing to do with it. Right. And we're more, and we and we should be that way. Be a little more gracious. Amen. Be a little more gracious to each other. Forgive, forgive. And I'll tell you, if you don't, God's got a way of knocking you off your high horse. Anybody. And he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll knock you down nuts too if you need it. And sometimes we need it. And he'll do it. Uh, so uh, don't forget that. Uh, we heard of your faith in Jesus. He didn't say, well, we heard y'all had a bu beautiful building. Since we heard of your great choir, since we heard of your the wonderful, uh, uh, your facilities. No, we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 5, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Good terminology. We got something laid up for us. Where have you heard before in the word of the truth of God? I, when I hear that, it reminds me of layaway. You ever put something on layaway? Uh, you Maybe you, you're going, you put the down payment on, you say, uh, lay this away for Christmas, I'll come back and get it. That's what the Lord, right? stuff is laid up for us in heaven, and one day we're actually going to get it and possess it. It's laid up for you in heaven. We are not crazy old hillbillies that just believe in heaven because we've had a hard life on this earth. That's what that's what educated people say. Oh, them crazy old mountain people, they just believe that because they had it hard growing up. They have, have to have something to believe in. Uh-uh, uh-uh. The Bible said we really got something laid up for us waiting in a real place. And that real place is called heaven. Verse 6, which is coming to you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you. What is that? The truth of the gospel. Verse 5. And since the day you heard of it. And knew the grace of God in truth. Now a little phrase there. In all the world. I'm assuming. That he meant them apostles took off. And they preached everywhere in the world. Known world at that time. What it says. In all the world. Uh, does that mean there's somebody out there. In a jungle somewhere that maybe didn't hear the gospel yeah it probably does it probably does mean that it doesn't mean every single person had heard it but it's free you know the gospel's being preached all around the world right now especially since we've got the internet right now anybody in the world can have access to the gospel right now unless they're in a, in a jungle tribe somewhere who have no communication outside world and God sends missionary stuff that always have to the places like that so uh, he said it not only goes in all the world, but it brings forth fruit. It'll bring forth fruit. You ever heard anybody say, the only reason you believe like that is because you was raised here. If you was raised in Iran, you might believe completely different. You ever, anybody ever tried that on you? And there are a lot of people in Iran that believe different. But the Bible said it goes to all the world and it brings forth fruit in all the world. There's Muslims turning to Jesus right now. Seen that? Heard about that? There's some Muslims getting saved, finding the truth. Amen. Uh, and the truth will stand the world on fire. Look at verse 7. And this is a guy that he may have founded this church. I don't know. As ye also learn of Epaphras, I think that's his name, our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of Christ who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. So that's how they found out how this church was doing. This guy Epaphras uh, was a fellow servant of Paul, and he comes and said, man, 
You ain't going to believe them people down there. They're setting the woods on fire. People's getting saved. Uh, they're going out street preaching. They're, they're baptizing converts. God bless them. That's how he found out. Uh, oh, what a breath of fresh air. What a breath of fresh air. Isn't it good to hear somebody brag on a church like that once in a while? Uh, these people that I was talking about a minute ago, they get on TikTok and they'll say, uh, they'll say stuff like this. Oh, I had that beat in me my whole life. They took us in Sunday school and scared us and said that we was going to burn in hell. And they make it, they make it sound like, they make it sound like that church is run by a bunch of crazy people taking little kids and saying, God's going to burn you. You know, they make, they got it all weird, weird and wicked. That's a wicked way to be. That's a wicked way to be. You say, do you tell kids there's a hell? I sure do. Because it's a sin lie to them. If there ain't no hell, how do you know there ain't no heaven? What makes you think it? Same book. You get them both the same book. You, look, look. You don't tell kids they can burn in hell because they're little and God's mad at them going to burn them for not doing what he wants. That ain't right. That's perverted. You pervert it. You tell them the greatest love story that's ever been told. God loved you. Jesus died for you and all that. And we're, we're bound for eternity when we come into this world. And God sent his son to redeem us and pay the price for our sin. They make him into the bad guy. It's ridiculous. You don't get mad at somebody. You get mad at the devil. Somebody said the other day, they said to her, so-and-so said she wasn't coming to church no more because cause the, the baby died or, or, or my mom got sick or something like that. And I said, well, don't blame God for that. Man, all the sin and all the pain and heartache in this world is because of sin and the devil. Don't blame God. Don't blame God. Somebody wrote a book and, they, and it has all the time says, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Oh, boy, that's our generation, ain't it? Ain't that our generation? Well, why do bad things happen to good people? i tell you what you ought to think. You ought to think, how come such good things happen to sorry people? Amen. Yeah. It's not fair God put anybody in hell. It ain't fair he let dogs like us in heaven neither. Yeah. You better thank God for that. Yeah. Amen, Brother Danny. I'm about, to go, I'm about to start preaching here if I don't watch it now. But I'm telling you, brother, thank God, brother. Thank God. Hallelujah. Don't, don't say, well, if God's so mean. Like, God ain't mean. The devil's mean. God so loved the world. Listen, he's mighty good or he would never let a dog like me in heaven. He'd never let me go live where he lives. Never would I get to go there. I'm sorry as a devil. I'm mean as a dog, brother. And he, he loved me and covered my sin in the blood. People got it all wrong. And that's why I encourage you to read the Bible and go to church because your head will get screwed up, y'all. They put a pretty girl on TikTok and make you believe it. That wicked little husband. <laughs> That's right. Or a smart, educated man that sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And you girls will think, he really sounds right. He's a professor. And he said that they, they found, you, you heard me, they get on there and say, there's no evidence to prove there's a God. Well, whatever. Ain't our job to prove is one. It's your job to prove it ain't one. If you don't believe it, prove it ain't one. You can't prove there ain't no God. So you say, I don't believe in God. Prove it. <laughs> there's no evidence to prove there's no God. That way, give, them their, give them their medicine. Now, I've debated people for years, and over the years I have learned a few little, little ways of debating people. And the best way to de debate people like that is give them their own medicine. Give them their own medicine. Amen? Like what I just said there a minute ago. And then tell them God loves them. Give them a little taste of their own medicine. All right, let's move on here tonight. Uh, verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease, here it is again, to pray for you. You reckon the Lord might be telling us something tonight? You reckon the Lord might be saying, hey, people at Shine Light Baptist Church, have y'all been praying for each other? Instead of criticizing, instead of asking, why ain't old so-and-so do this? Why don't I don't like the way she does this. She, her, he done, their kid. Have you been praying? He said, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled, what I've been talking about, with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. My job for you is to pray for you that you might be filled with knowledge, just like what I just got through talking about, about proving us to God. It, to me, it's as simple 
I, I, I know that somebody made this pulpit. Did I see them? No. Nope. Well, if you didn't see it, you don't know. Yeah, I do. I know it because it's evidenced. I mean, look, look at it. This is evidence of a design. Did, did I see them? You say, well, you don't know 1,000%. They might, that might have just fell out of the woods, in the woods. and Yeah, okay. Well, you can think like that if you want to. But you know it's 99.9.9.9.9.9.9.9 that somebody made this stuff. And look, people. Look at, look at you, the human body. Look at your eyes, your ears, and everything. That cannot happen by itself. There's got to be a God. That's proof. Creation proves there's a creator. Design. Design proves there's a designer. See these little things right here? These little teeth on this thing? That's just for look. But that proves somebody designed this thing. These letters, that's design. You can't have design unless there's a designer. Now, they might be a rock somewhere and you have to look at it, squinch out, and it looks like a camel. I mean, I've seen them. Uh, and that could be a natural thing. But this right here ain't no natural thing. Somebody made this thing. And if you went to court, if you went to court, and I said, there is a God, and Richard Dawkins said, there is no God, the judge would say, what's your proof, Mr. Castle? And I'd say, somebody made, this shows evidence of a designer. See my eyes? That shows evidence of a designer. What's your evidence there ain't no God, Mr. Dawkins? Well, I ain't got none, but I want a party. Now, he wouldn't say that. But that's what's the problem. People can't find God same reason thief can't find a policeman. <laughs> they don't want to find him. They want to, they want to shack up and, and nobody tell them what to do. But people are atheists because they don't want God telling them what to do. If you'd sit and think about it, if you'd sit and think about it for just a minute, you'd think, uh-uh. It couldn't have popped out of nowhere by itself. Somebody made it. And that's what we need. We pray. I want you to be Filled with that knowledge. You kids have to go to a public school. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. And, I, and I'm telling you, 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 need to, you, need to, you need to arm yourselves. Especially if you're going to go to college. Especially if you're going to go to college. They'll steal your faith, man. They'll make an atheist out of you in a heartbeat. So uh, look at it. Now, now let's hurry along here. i got to hurry and get down on here where I want to get to. Verse 11, strengthened. That's what I'm doing to you tonight. With all might. According to his glorious power, under all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Uh, I, you want to be strengthened and get stronger and stronger in the Lord. If you're not stronger in the Lord tonight than you was this time last year, uh, you're, you're something wrong. Something wrong. You should be reading every day and be stronger in your faith all the time. Giving thanks. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. See that? Learn how to read the Bible. You know what meat means? Equal. They like this. Meat. Like two things meet each other. Meat. It meat to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Great verse. Great verse. This is spiritual inheritance, of course. You know how you know? Verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. You don't have to live like a witch no more. And like Ouija boards and seances and 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 drink, smoke pot, and stuff like that. You're delivered from that and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Now that would be, uh, you've heard me mention it before, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. We do not have time to get into it tonight. I will, Lord willing. People have asked me about it. What's the difference in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven? Is there any difference? Uh, if you went to Probably 99% of the churches in this town, the preacher would tell you there's no difference. They're both the same. But the truth is, uh, they're not. They're not. They can't be. Uh, the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is you're born into one and you walk in the other. Kingdom of God, you're born into it. If you're born again into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is just like this building right here. I'm going to walk in it one day. Be. And it's going to come down I mean, on this earth. Now the problem comes because there's so many times, especially in the Gospels, where they're sort of used interchangeably. And the reason they're used interchangeably is because that's the only time the king was here. 
So you won't find that kingdom of heaven in, in the, I don't think, in, in the Paul's epistles to the church. I don't think, I have to check that, but uh, I think, to my fact, I, I, think, I think I got a fact checker coming here on Sunday morning anyway. Uh, they're, they're checking me, but I think I got to get my stuff straight. But uh, you can check this. I'm not claiming I'm right. I don't think the kingdom term kingdom of heaven is is uh, in the Pauline epistles. But basically, the kingdom of God is spiritual. And, and he said one time, the kingdom of God is within you. And the kingdom of God you're born into. And the kingdom of God is is uh, meat uh, is not meat and drink. It's nothing literal. It's spiritual. The kingdom of heaven is a literal. Visible kingdom with gates and streets and walls and a king. And the reason they're mentioned interchangeably in the Gospels is because the king was here. John Baptist came preaching, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Well, that's 2,000 years ago and it still ain't come. Now, either kingdom of heaven's at hand means long, 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 long time or it changed when they rejected the king. One of them too. When he said the kingdom of heaven's at hand, he wasn't talking about, my goodness, they killed the Lord. They crucified him. So he, he came and offered the kingdom to the Jews. They rejected it. He died on the cross. And then the church started to become the spiritual kingdom. That's why all these pre TV preachers, they all get all messed up. They say, we're preaching this kingdom philosophy, this kingdom philosophy. You're all these TV preachers. We're at kingdom dominion, and we're coming in, and we're taking over what the devil stole. Hey, hey, whatever. You're, you're out of your mind, brother. Uh, listen, we the Lord ain't running the world right now. He's not in charge. It's laying in the devil's lap, this world is right now. The Bible said, we know that we are of God in the whole world, life and wickedness. That's right. Now, I want to get to verse 14 because it is one of the greatest verses in the New Testament. But we'll, have, we'll wait and do that next week. But look at that kingdom in verse 13. We're going to get there in the redemption through the blood next week. And I want you to look. You got any other? Every other version of the Bible you can find leaves out the word blood out of verse 14. Now, the new King James has it, but they, they got pressured into it because they, they knew it wouldn't fly with people just trying to sell that thing to. And there's one other one that put it in italics. But I checked them, and I'll get into that next week. So, but back to this kingdom thing in verse 13. Uh, there, there was no kingdom of God in the Old Testament. Only the kingdom of heaven. And when the Jews rejected the Lord, there, Jeconiah, that last king, there was no kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. Then when Jesus came, there was a kingdom of, of heaven and the kingdom of God, then he went back to heaven, and now there's just the kingdom of God, and one day there'll be the kingdom of heaven. Basically. Adam was king. Adam was king. Moses was king. Uh, Noah was king. He, 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 he put them over, give them dominion. He told Noah, have dominion over everything. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll study that kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven sometimes. Very, 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 very good, deep Bible study. All right, hearts clear? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, never eye closed. Now, you got a little doctrine tonight that helped you understand the Bible, and you got a little practical stuff too, like if you've been praying for each other. If you've not, let's all ask the Lord to forgive us right now. Lord, I pray that you'll forgive me for not praying for my brothers and sisters like I should. God put a burden on my heart right now. Pray. For my brothers and sisters, more and more with more intensity and more uh, uh, rapid uh, times and more uh, difficult times and days and problems that we live in, and Lord, in a more deep, concerned way, and help us, Lord, to go out of here tonight determined, pray for each other. Have your way in our hearts now. Bless us all, Lord, as we're getting ready to go visiting Saturday morning. I pray you bless our visits, Lord. Lord, put it on people's heart to come and. We'll go knock on doors and go visit and then bless the sweetheart banquet Sunday or Saturday evening and then meet back with us Sunday morning with the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Be, be friendly, 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 friendly. Fellowship. Everybody. <laughs>